What is that? It's our testing machine to see the battery drain for the Magic Keyboard. Oh, that's pretty cool. We're gonna have to name it, aren't we? Yeah, everything else has a name. What should we call it? Penelope? <laughs> no, um, or, all of our, our things are girls. Argento? Argento? Wow, that's <laughs> a really good name. Hmm. I kind of like, I kind of like Arthur. Arthur it is. When the Magic Keyboard was released months ago, there was this rumor that this thing uh, was a power drain on the iPad. And so I really wanted to figure out if that was truly the case. And this is what we've done. At Mobile Reviews, a Monty Val and I base our videos on actual usage. We take the time and effort to do, well, it right, which means running dozens and dozens of charge tests on this very, very sad iPad Pro. Well, this iPad Pro is actually not that sad. I'm sad because I didn't get to use my favorite iPad for over a month because of all these charge tests. Now, when it comes to iPad Pro keyboards, I prefer the products that use the iPad's own smart connector instead of an external battery, which is basically every third party product out there. For me, it's just one less thing to worry about using your iPad battery to power the keyboard, but I never really got a handle of just how much power this well, product consumed. So there were eight different scenarios that we tested for, and they were split up between discharging and charging. Now I used an app called Amperes to measure the charge rates and the game Overland to burn through the batteries. Now as a side note, the fastest way I could burn an iPad Pro battery was to have the game Overland on on full brightness while charging another iPhone through a Qi charger connected to the iPad Pro. Now I will admit that I don't know how accurate the Amperes app is, this thing. <laughs> but the value seemed pretty close to the meters that I do have, and I honestly wasn't interested in the accuracy of it, just the precision and subsequently the relative change in the data. I used the exact same charger and cable and socket for all the tests and kept the iPad on airplane mode for all the tests. On the data size, I used only values between 10 and 90%. And I didn't use anything under 10% because, well, each set of data didn't start exactly at the same percentage. And I didn't use anything above 90 because I really didn't care about trickle charging. So to charge the iPad by itself, like this, with it plugged in, it took two and a half hours to charge. Now the second scenario was charging the iPad Pro with the keyboard attached, but still through the iPad, and that was only two hours and 25 minutes. That's a little weird that it's faster with, you know, more stuff attached to the iPad, but that's only a four minute difference, which works out to be about a 3% difference. And that's a very, very small number, almost negligible. I would almost consider it as a statistical anomaly. Now here's when things get a little interesting. Charging the iPad through the Magic Keyboard, that takes three hours and 57 minutes, almost 60% slower than the previous two charge rates. Yikes. So let's talk about the full charge test with, well, Arthur. Now, when I decided what I was gonna do with this video, I knew I wanted to test the charge rates of the keyboard while it was being in use with backlit keys on. That's the only scenario that makes sense to me. Now, I could have done a video where you just watch me type and guess what's going on, but that just was like a waste of everyone's time. In order for me to have it on all the time, I had to go build something. So I took a stepper motor, mounted it to a tie plate, I then mounted a mending plate to the shaft, and attached an old stylus to the end of the mending plate and put it all on a tiny platform. Then I took Arthur and then attached it to a Raspberry Pi. This little doohickey allows me to keep the Magic Keyboard on all the time without having to be physically there. Again, mobile reviews, real usage, real reviews, real videos, I guess. So it's Friday, 410, August 28th just about to go home, but I finally installed and glued all the bits and pieces for the uh, little stylus thing that's gonna turn around. I'm trying to find my beer. <laughs> these tips on these styluses actually require a good amount of pressure on the trackpad. And so it's not just the tip that actually needs to touch the trackpad, there needs to be a lot of surface area. Now I'm not a very good programmer, more of a hack than anything else. So all I want to do is to be able to have this thing drag on the trackpad. Oh, I just totally came off. So that I always have the trackpad on to gauge how much power is being consumed by that product. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> I know it looks incredibly simple, but given how much of a hack I am, I'm exceptionally proud of this because there's enough pressure that the trackpad is being used. So I can totally just leave this running while this thing charges to figure out how much the Magic Trackpad consumes. Oh, so 
so awesome. So with Arthur doing his thing, it took four hours and 47 minutes to charge the iPad Pro from 10 to 90 through the keyboard. That's almost twice as long as the fastest charge rate, well, charging it just normally through your iPad. The next thing I did was to use Arthur again, but instead of charging through the Magic Keyboard, I went directly to the iPad, and that took four hours and 20 minutes, a little faster, but still, pretty slow. Now at this moment, it just seems so scandalous because it just looked like the Magic Keyboard was a massive, massive power hog. One could almost surmise that the Magic Keyboard was using 50% of the iPad Pro's charge. You could almost say that. Did Monty and I just stumble upon one of Apple's fails? Now before Monty and I could go and cry wolf, we realized that we were dealing initially with only the charging of the iPad Pro battery and not the discharging of the iPad Pro battery. So there's a big difference there. First time watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. I've got a lot of neat stuff coming your guys' way. Um, these videos take a lot of effort to do. A lot of time, really, because charging this thing for dozens and dozens of cycles just takes time. <laughs> now, when it came to discharge tests, Monty and I came up with three tests. The first test was just discharging the iPad while having the Overland game run. A uh, second one was discharging it with the Overland game running attached to a Magic Keyboard. And a third one was to let Arthur have its way with the Magic Keyboard while playing Overland or letting Overland run. Now, with all these discharge tests, we had a stopwatch beside the iPad and we filmed everything using a time lapse on an iPhone so that we can get a good sense of when uh, it started and when the uh, 10% um, battery warning would show up. That's the time that we measured uh, for these tests. Now, remember those very large discrepancies between charging? I was expecting to see those for the discharge, but I didn't. <laughs> the first test, which is just the iPad by itself, the iPad reached 10% battery power in two hours and 23 minutes. With the Magic Keyboard attached to the iPad Pro, uh, but not really in use, it took two hours and four minutes. That's only a 20-ish minute difference on average. Now with Arthur going crazy on the trackpad, the discharge time was only a little bit under two hours, an hour and 58, 59 minutes on average. What? So between the slowest and fastest discharges, there was about an approximately 15% difference, closer to 18, I think. Um, but that's really not that much. Between test number two and test number three, with the Magic Keyboard attached to the iPad and Arthur, it's closer to like a 3% difference, and that's almost statistically insignificant from my perspective. Now, these discharge tests really stumped me because I was expecting it to have these gigantic swings like we saw with the uh, charge test, but it wasn't the case. The charge test still made sense to me, but it was just that magnitude of difference that just really stood out to me like a sore thumb. It almost felt like when charging, the iPad doesn't know what to do with all the spare power. Am I supposed to power just the Magic Keyboard keyboard, and maybe charge the battery or should I be charging the battery and not as much? Or it just seems really confused when you're charging your iPad through the Magic Keyboard or with the Magic Keyboard on it while using it. <laughs> Anyways, what do you guys think about this, what I've just shown you? I'm gonna show you a bunch of BTS clips. You can leave me what you think in the comments section below. Monty and I have gone with two takeaways, so yeah, we'll let you know after these things that will make you laugh. The second was charging a dead iPad. The second was charging a dead iPad connected to the Magic Keyboard. The next was charging an iPad. The next was charging directly. The next was directly. <laughs> the next was charging. The next. The next was charging an iPad directly while attached to a magic keyboard. Now I use an app called. That was so painful to do. And I honestly wasn't interested in the app. Seriously, buddy? What the fuck did I just say? Oh, frick, I didn't even finish this part because I don't know what to say about it. So we'll have to come back to it. I don't think that's 15%. I think my math is wrong on this one. Let's see if that works. So here are Monty and I's takeaways for this video. The first one is that if you are in a power crunch and you need to charge your iPad and you've got the magic keyboard, plug it, the power cable directly into the iPad because that gives you the best, uh, it's the most efficient way of charging your iPad. The second thing is, well, it deals more with the title of this video is the uh, I magic keyboard a power hog. It really isn't. There is a noticeable difference between, you know, full usage and none, but in reality, 
it's going to be that 25 minute difference on average is going to be much smaller because you're not constantly swiping and doing this 20 for two hours straight. You're going to be swiping once in a while, typing, tapping. And so the Magic Keyboard isn't going to use as much power on a day, on a real usage daily basis than what Arthur does for two hours straight. It's good to know that that difference is there and it's not large enough that it is going to change my opinion about the Magic Keyboard because in my opinion, over the last 12 months, this keyboard on the iPad has been the most exciting product from Apple that I've used. Like I really like this product out of all the other uh, Bluetooth keyboards that I can get for this iPad Pro 12.9 inch, this Magic Keyboard by Apple is by far the best one. Albeit the most expensive one, but still the best one. That's all I got. First time watching my videos, again, click subscribe, hit the notification bell so that every single time Monty gets put onto YouTube, you get to uh, watch him right away.